Hello, everybody. Uh, today we are going to be taking our first step into poetry and talking about what is poetry and then diving deep into rhythm and rhyme scheme, which is like the basic building blocks of any poem. All of these notes will be in PDF and the PowerPoint form. You're going to follow along with those, or you can just watch the video and then go back and refer to it if you need some more help. Those will serve as your notes. You don't have to write down any notes. So first of all, what is poetry? Well, it is writing that is chosen and arranged to create an emotional response with meaning and sound and rhythm. Uh, you can write about literally anything and anybody can be a poet. Something that is important to notice is that instead of paragraphs, each section of poetry is called a stanza. So instead of paragraphs, we have stanzas. That's important language and vocabulary to have with poetry. And probably my favorite and what's going to be your favorite part about poetry is that it does not have to follow grammatical conventions of prose. Prose is just everyday language, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, but we, you don't have to have proper punctuation. You can even make up words to make them rhyme if you want. Uh, that's the great thing about poetry. It can be whatever you want. So the difference between poetry and prose. Um, poetry is lyrical, it has rhythm, it has rhyme. Um, it kind of feels a little bit musical. Songs are poems just set to music. Uh, so you enjoy poetry whether you realize it or not. It doesn't have to have proper punctuation or grammar. Uh, like our example with uh, Trampoline by Shel Silverstein below. Bouncing upon the trampoline so high above the ground, just as I was going up, I saw her coming down. Going and coming and bouncing. Those aren't your, uh, that's not what we'd write if we were writing a paper, a formal paper. She had a daisy in her hair. She wore a silken gown. But when she started going up, I was coming down. I tried to say, hello, nice day. She smiled and spun around. Come up a while with me, yelled she, but I was going down. And so as yet, we've never met because we've sadly found that one is always going up with, while, other, while one is coming down. So you can see how it kind of has a rhythm, a flow. It's a little musical, a little lyrical, different than your everyday uh, writing about a trampoline which we will see right here. This is an example of a paragraph in prose. Remember, prose is just everyday language. Um, it is written um, in everyday language, like I just said, and it is grammatically correct, and it is usually indented. This is a paragraph I pulled off of GASP Wikipedia. Uh, just describing what a trampoline is. A trampoline is a device consisting of a piece of taut, strong fabric stretched between a steel frame using many coiled springs. Excuse me, not all trampolines have springs as the spring-free trampoline uses glass reinforced plastic rods. I'm not going to go on and explain the and read the rest of that paragraph. You can do that on your own. But it doesn't have it's not as exciting, first of all. It doesn't have an emotional response. It doesn't really tell a story. Um, although prose can tell a story. Um, that's how our novels and such are written and short stories, uh, but it doesn't have, um, it's divided into paragraphs rather than stanzas, and it doesn't have rhythm, rhyme, uh, figurative language, things like that. So that's the basic difference between the two. Let's go ahead and start talking about rhythm and rhyme. Okay, so the two techniques, these are the two techniques that poets use to give um, their poems a musical quality. They are the most basic pieces of a poem. If you can identify the rhythm and if you can identify the rhyme, you're right on track. Let's start with rhythm. That is the pattern of beats in poetry. We represent it using numbers. Usually I like to do it on the left side of the poem, uh, simply because the rhymes are on the right side where the line ends. So I think it's just easier to keep track of them that way. Uh, but we usually, when you get more in depth into poetry, you focus on the stressed and unstressed syllables. That means what, what, what syllables do you put your emphasis on? Uh, for this unit right now, we're just going to focus on counting the number of beats in each line rather than seeing if it is stressed or unstressed. We count the number of syllables in the line. The 
there's two ways you can do it. First, you can just count it out using your fingers. I think that's the best way. In fact, when I was preparing for this and going through all the poems we're about to talk about, I literally tapped on the table to make sure I had all the rhythm correct. So it's okay to use your fingers to count in this case. You can also use tally marks. You can put little um, dots above each syllable if you are actually looking at the poem and you can write on top of it. Um, and then you can count those up after that. Another way is to say it out loud. And the way you can tell if it is a different syllable is to see when your jaw comes down. Because each syllable, your jaw will move. And we'll see an example of that in a moment. This is an example of a 3-4-4 rhythm poem. That means the first line has three beats, the third, second line has three, four beats, excuse me, and the third line has fourth beat, four beats. Good grief. So Saint Matthew, that's three beats, Saint Matthew. Warrior's Love, that's four beats. Writing Poems, four beats. If this were to continue and I wanted to keep the same rhythm, my next stanza would also be three, four, four. So you can see in the example down there, I have written it to the side, three, four, four. Now, when I ask you to identify it, you don't have to put it in brackets. You can just put the number next to the left side of the line. Um, yeah. I think that's it. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Normal, everyday Miss Rodriguez. The next thing is the rhyme scheme. The, these are the rhyming words at the end of the line. As long as they are pretty close to rhyming, um, then it is a rhyme. Uh, we have things called slant rhymes, which are have the same um, vowel sound and might have a different consonant at the end. Um, those are considered rhymes still, but for our case, when we are writing uh, our poetry, I want you to stick with absolute true rhymes like C, B, he, she, we, things like that. We label them using the letters of the alphabet. Each new rhyme gets, I should say rhyme, gets a new letter. When you go down to another stanza, if it begins a new, um, rhyme sound, then you start with a new letter. You don't start with A again. And we're going to look at some uh, examples. But not every poem has to rhyme. And not every poem has a consistent rhyme scheme. Uh, some poems you might see, it might be like limericks are always um, A, A, B, B, A. Always. And they're always uh, five lines. <laughs> five lines long. Um, if you have uh, poems that have four, each stanza has four lines, and it's an A, B, B, A, it doesn't always have to have um, the same rhyming sounds in your A's and your B's with each, with each stanza. That's a little bit more complicated to understand. I'm going to show you some examples to show you what that means. So this is an example of a four-line A, B, A, B poem. I love my curly locks. They are my unique feature. Every time that we talk, you recognize your teacher. Guess who that's about? Uh, so our first line, we're going to write as an A, because uh, that's the, our first rhyme. It locks and talk, they rhyme. So both of those lines are going to be labeled with A. Feature and teacher both rhyme. And those are going to be, since it's a brand new rhyme, those are both going to be labeled B. So if I were going through, I would look locks, A, feature, B, talk, that rhymes with locks. I'm going to write an A next to it. Teacher, that rhymes with feature. I'm going to write a B next to it. If I were to continue, and here's it, here it is written out. If I were to continue and continue my A, B, A, B poem, my next stanza would not have to rhyme with locks. I can start a brand new rhyme. Um, I love my curly hair. And then my third line would have to rhyme with hair. Um, in poetry, instead of listing out that it's an A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, just to get 
the understanding that it's all the same rhyme scheme, even if it's not the same rhyming words, we put those, uh, that's how we label it. When we are going through an actual poem, we would actually label each stanza with a new letter. We're gonna do some practice in a moment. So uh, sixth grade, you're gonna read Life Doesn't Frighten Me by Maya Angelou. And we're gonna do that in just one second. Seventh grade, you're gonna read two poems, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost and Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, both of, all of those poems, I'm gonna show you how to do it with part of it. And then I'm gonna give you some time to practice it on your own. You're gonna pause the video and then you're gonna come back and see how you did and compare with my answers. Okay, sixth grade, so let's take a look at um, Life Doesn't Frighten Me by Maya Angelou. Let's see if I can, there we go. Um, I'm gonna start off by just reading it. I think the first thing you should always do before you go into analysis or by trying to find the rhythm or the rhyme is just read it and listen to it. Read it a couple of times because you might not get the full meaning until you hear it all the way through once and then again, kind of knowing what's coming. And luckily poems are so short, it doesn't take very long to do this. So another thing to note is with poems, see at the top, we don't italicize them, we don't underline them, they go in quotation marks. Uh, Maya Angelou is the author of this. Uh, she is a very famous and prolific, prolific author. And I thought that this poem was very um, apt uh, for right now. And something that we should remember that life shouldn't frighten you right now. So. Let's get started. Shadows on the wall, noises down the hall. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Bad dogs barking loud, big ghosts in a cloud. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Mean old mother goose, lions on the loose. They don't frighten me at all. Dragons breathing flame on my counterpane. That doesn't fr frighten me at all. I go boo, make them shoo. I make fun, way they run. I won't cry, so they fly. I just smile, they go wild. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Tough guys fight all alone at night. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Panthers in the dark, strangers in the, oh, panthers in the park, excuse me, strangers in the dark. No, they don't frighten me at all. That new classroom wear, all, boys all pull my hair. Kissy little girls with their hair in curls. They don't frighten me at all. Don't show me frogs and snakes and listen for my scream. I'm afraid, if I'm afraid at all, it's only in my dreams. I've got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve. I can walk the ocean floor and never have to breathe. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Not at all, not at all. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Okay. If you'd like to go back and listen to that again, just hit rewind real quick. I'm not gonna read it twice because you can do that on your own. Uh, but we're going to step right into the uh, rhythm. And remember, we take a look at this on the left side. And I just, I made, this is the first half of the poem. We're going to start off with it. So remember, the first, you can do this with your jaw and count it out. So let's look at the first line. Shadows on the wall. Five. Let's look at the next line. Noises down the hall. Five. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Eight. Let's see how I did. Five, five, eight. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Bad dogs barking loud. Five. Big ghosts in a cloud. Five. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Eight. Five, five, eight. I see a pattern going here. Hmm. I wonder if the whole thing is going to be like that. Spoiler, it's not. Mean old mother goose, five. Lions on the loose, five. They don't frighten me at all. I already know that one's eight. Dragons breathing fire, five. On my counter pain, five. That doesn't frighten me at all. Eight. The next stanza is a little different 
that's okay. It kind of quickens it up. It makes it a little bit more lyrical, um, a little bit like word choice, right? So I go boo, three, make them shoo. I make fun, way they run. All of those are all three. It's kind of interesting and kind of cool. Life doesn't frighten me at all again. That's eight, we've already tried that one already. Pretty interesting. Let's see about the rhyme. I'm gonna go back a little. So we just look at the last words when we look at the rhyme, the last words of each line. When I see wall, that's automatically gonna be an A. Whatever I start with on the very first stanza, it's gonna be an A. Does hall rhyme with it? Yep. Does all rhyme with it? Yep. Those are all gonna be A's. A, A, A. Let's see if the rest of the rhyme scheme is the same. Loud doesn't rhyme with all or wall or hall. And it's a new stanza, so I'm going to make it a B. Loud and cloud rhyme, so both of those are labeled B. And all rhymes with the rhymes at the beginning, so that one's going to be an A again. So we have loud and cloud that rhyme, and all rhymes with what's above, B, B, A. So, so far, our two stanzas are A, 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 B, B, A. Let's see what the next one is. Goose and loose rhyme, but they don't rhyme with anything else. All rhymes with something from above, so we put it as the same letter, C, C, A. Same thing with the next one, flame and counterpane. Those two rhyme, and all rhymes with the very first rhyme that we did, D, D, A. Let's look at the next stanza. Boo and shoe, they rhyme and are totally new rhymes. Fun and run, they rhyme and are totally new rhymes. Cry and fly, rhyme and totally new. Smile and wild, they actually rhyme. That's one of those slant, line, r slant rhymes I was talking about. Um, those are gonna be new letters. So we have E, E, F, F, G, G, H, H. All in our last stanza all by itself, rhymes with our very first one we're gonna have an A. Okay, so here we have our first half of the poem done. It didn't take very long. I want you to try and do the second half by yourself. So here it is. I'm gonna, I want you to pause, give yourself some time, and then I'm gonna go through it a little bit quicker than what I did when I was walking you through the first half of the, po of the poem. Okay, hopefully you actually paused and it wasn't just an awkward couple of seconds. And I really wanted you to try that at home. Think of it as like doing it on a whiteboard or something. But here we have um, the rhythm for the second half of the poem. Three, five, eight, five, five, eight, five, 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 five seven. Yep, six, 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 seven, six. 8338. Now there isn't a consistent rhyme or sorry, rhythm scheme um rhythm all the way through, but it kind of ebbs and flows like a story. You got really slow parts, you got really fast parts, you got um it's kind of like a almost like a plot diagram with a climax and such. She's really making you uh think about things with the, how she uses her rhythm. Let's take a look at the rhyme. I want you to take some time again to pause it right here and try to figure out the rhyme scheme of the second half. You're not gonna start with A because this is still a continuation of the poem that we started before. Our last letters, let's see that what we use, our last letter was H. So your next new rhyme letter is going to be an I. So go ahead, pause it right here and try to see if you can get it correct. Okay, let's see how you did. I, I, A, J, J, A, K, K, L, L, A, M, N, A, N, O, P, Q, P, A, 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 A. How'd you do? I hope you did really well, and I hope this helped you out. Um, here is the whole poem once again. And you can see it is, um, she has a lot of repetition, which we're gonna talk about later on. Uh, I hope this was a poem that you enjoyed and I hope that you um, really enjoy 
labeling the rhythm and the rhyme scheme. If you have any questions, please reach out to me.